Senthil, we can have your video and audio on. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll start at four. Sure, sure. I'll also test sharing my screen. Oh, okay. The host has disabled. Can oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. Have given you rights. Okay. Yep. Can you see my screen now? Okay, so hello and welcome to the 45th edition of Mojo series, a webinar series where we talk all things business. Thank you to all of our viewers who are coming in right now and who will come in later or who will watch this later. We are joined by Santhal Kumar Hariram, the VP of Neil Patel Digital India. And in our, in our industry, we have always held Neil Patel and its agency in the highest regards for their ability to help online businesses sustainably scale and also improve their conversion rates dramatically. Senthil himself has an experience of over a decade where he has worked with numerous brands and has helped them unlock massive potential to grow and build a trustworthy reputation. Thank you so much for joining us Senthil today. Our viewers are excited to absorb whatever wealth of information that you are going to be sharing. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Rahi. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much for the warm welcome. So excited to talk about SEO with you all. So today we are actually going to primarily be talking to budding entrepreneurs who are maybe thinking of starting their own online stores or already have just started their online stores. And whenever, so you can imagine, they have an idea in their head, right? They have a product or a service that they want to sell, but they also have this anxiety. Will people buy from me? Can, does this have the potential of becoming a huge, um, just like a successful business? 
So today, Senthil, I'm going to ask you on behalf of our audience, tell our audience what can they do, what are the first steps that they need to take to get discovered and to start attracting customers and to ensure that this happens sustainably over a longer period of time. Yeah, absolutely. Really excited to share you all the information learnings that I have got over the years. Yeah. Cool. So awesome. So what I'll do next is I'll share my screen. We will go through it. Um, so, so uh, you know, before I begin, I understand that, um, you know, uh, most of you folks are new um, into the world of SEO. So my assumption is that you'll be in a scale of one to 10. My assumption is you'll be having some basic knowledge somewhere about two to three or max to five. That is the angle. If you're a uh, you know, advanced technical SEO, you know, this might bore you guys, you know, this is just to help you help the basics set up for the entrepreneurs and uh, also anybody new in the SEO world who want to start off their career in SEO, um, you know, this, this particular uh, webinar will also be super helpful for you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. So you're going to learn in this webinar about how to improve organic traffic for your e-commerce store. Of course, you can apply some of these tactics, some of the techniques which I'm going to explain to you in some other businesses, even in B2B, in other um, you know industries as well. But primarily, we want to start off with e-commerce because this is the rage these days. Uh, Post-COVID, we have seen a lot of e-commerce stores um, that are coming along. Um, so we thought you know it'll be best if we can conduct this webinar focusing on you folks who are having or at least planning to have an online store trying to sell whatever product that you have or you're going to resell somebody else's product. So I think this webinar will be very helpful for you guys um, to understand how to grow organic traffic for your website. Yep. So yeah, Rahi, so I hope we're all set, right? Can you, my, yeah. my voice is audible, everything is fine, my screen is visible, right? Uh, I think it is, and I have my teammates on standby. Yes, it's all good. Okay, wonderful. And just a note here, uh, as Senthil said, if there's anybody who maybe also wants an, wants an advanced class on SEO, please let us know in the comments below. We will make sure we engage and we let you know when we do get to that point. Brilliant, cool. So guys, uh, with regards to uh, the e-commerce industry, I would say more specific to direct to consumers um, industry, which is in India, it is headed to a hundred billion dollar, um, you know, industry itself. So what do you mean by D2C is like, there are a lot of people out there who sell their products on Amazon, on Flipkart or all these marketplaces. So what really happens is when you sell through those marketplaces, the customer details is not being shared with you, right? So Amazon, they take care of the fulfillment. So you won't be getting those kind of details, but there are platforms. If you have your own website and you sell your product on your own website, you own that entire data, right? You don't have to depend upon anybody else. So this has seen a tremendous increase. We call it as D2C, the direct to consumer or direct to customer. So this market in India is growing rapidly. As you can see here from 2015, it was a $6 billion uh, industry, but now in 2025, uh, it's just going to over 100 billion. In fact, uh, post COVID, this number is going to be bridged even more earlier than uh, projected. So sitting on a $100 billion valuation, I'm sure a lot of uh, people would want to get into the bus and try to join the same journey where everybody is headed to, and that is in terms of uh, D2C. However, what happens is that whenever you launch your website, you think that, okay, I've posted a product on the website, I'm going to get more traffic. But what usually happens is you have to pay for the traffic. There is, it takes quite a lot of time to actually build the organic traffic. By organic traffic, I'm, I'll be explaining you everything in the coming slides. Don't worry if you, if you don't know anything about organic traffic or whatever that I'm talking about, I'll go everything step by step. So consider the scenario where you have created your website you have maybe through Insta Mojo or whatever platforms you have created a store and you're trying to sell a product. Let's assume that you're selling a t-shirt, a custom made t-shirt for various events, or it might be like uh, maybe you're selling some handcrafts, uh, handcrafted furniture or any product that you're passionate about, you're just selling or even digital products. Maybe you have a course about teaching kids how to 
pay more attention in a class. So um, any product, be it digital or be it physical that you're trying to sell, um, you have it put up on your website, but then most of the store owners will be waiting for people to come and buy from their store. So the solution for small businesses is to grow a business above the standard growth projection that I was talking about, right? Um, most of the entrepreneurs who bootstrap their business, they put in their hard earned money into the business. They would need a source of traffic that gives a fair chance to everybody. So what I mean here is that when it comes to, uh, there are a lot of uh, places where you can pay and get traffic. Say for example, on Facebook, you can promote your uh, post about whatever product that you have. You can get traffic to your website. You can make people click on the link. They can visit your website and you can make them buy your products, right? All those cost money, right? So the more investment you're gonna make, the more traffic you're gonna get to your website. However, it is not something that is valid for everybody. You might not have enough VC funding. You know, you might, you might be bootstrapping. You're just, uh, you know, starting into this, uh, you know, in a brand new way. So for you, there is one channel which gives a fair chance to everybody, be it, uh, uh, you know, Amazon or be it Flipkart, you know, right there in center, you're trying to sell something. You can be also given a fair chance. And that's exactly why I love SEO, why I like businesses try to build organic traffic for them because everybody gets a fair chance. So even Amazon with deep pockets compared to them, you know, you can also have a chance if you have a good product uh, through organic channels, you'll be able to get some good traffic to your website, right? So just to give you a quick introduction about myself, I've been doing digital marketing since 2006. I'm uh, currently working as a vice president at Neil Patel Digital India. So I've been leading the SEO strategy for 100 plus brands in India. And prior to Neil Patel Digital, I was working with quite a lot of clients who've been from the US and uh, in India, like, you know, clients like HCL Technologies. There are, there are quite a lot of people whom I've worked with. And uh, I have taken quite a lot of learnings, mostly practical experiences, because when it comes to theory, there are a lot of things uh, which will be there in the handbook. But when it comes to practical execution, there will be certain challenges which people might face. So I always like to speak in a more practical sense that will be helping you to implement something right today. Say for example, there are a few things right after this webinar, you can do it for free without even paying anything to anybody. So you can try it today itself. So that's the angle I typically approach, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to SEO. So here's an example of how typically, let's consider that we are traveling to some, some native place and uh, we're traveling in a highway, right? And uh, you know, you're hungry, you want to stop in a, uh, you know, a specific restaurant. So there are various ways that you might decide you know, which restaurant on the highway that you want to choose. Either you, know, you might be searching on Google for the best restaurant in that highway. More specifically, you know, maybe if you're traveling between Chennai to Bangalore, you will be searching for best restaurant you know, in Chennai to Bangalore highway or whatever, right? And uh, mostly you will select a restaurant based on the reviews that people have left in most of the case, um, because you don't want to take a risk in travel. You want to only go to a restaurant which is uh, well-reviewed uh, by people. That is one way of doing it. That's other way is that, you know, casually when you're just traveling, you see a particular restaurant where there are a lot of cars parked and uh, that'll give you an indirect impulse that, okay, maybe the restaurant is famous. So a lot of cars are parked there. So you directly go and, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, have a nice, uh, you know, dinner or lunch in that restaurant. Then there is the other way where, you know, you are near a particular toll booth and you're asking someone and recommendation, you know, which is the best restaurant nearby. So they will be giving you some referral. Hey, you know what, in two kilometer, there is a, there is a new restaurant that has opened, <clears throat> you know, um, they have a good dish you can maybe try. So there might be a few people giving you uh, a good referral as well. Then, you know, there's other way where you might have seen a huge billboard on the highway saying that there is a restaurant three kilometers down the line, there is a, a restaurant. So that actually registered in your mind. And you, you know, the moment you see that restaurant, that recall is there and you directly drive your car towards that restaurant. Then of course, the other major things, like you might have seen a YouTuber, if you're a hardcore foodie, foodie you might have uh, you know seen a YouTuber's review about certain restaurant and you might want to pay up a visit. Already you would have made up your mind before even starting your travel, you know that which restaurant you're gonna go and have your uh, lunch or dinner. 
and the other way the other option is also you might have seen some of your friends who are traveling in that highway they might have posted a good dish on instagram and you might also want to check out the restaurant so these are various ways typically that um, you know you pay a visit to a restaurant now turning this completely towards an online channel where let's assume that there is a restaurant which is selling say for example uh, domino's pizza where you can go and order online so how this works out is you might search on google for the best takeaway restaurant and uh, or a best uh, pizza restaurant near me or whatever so you might search on google and then you will see the search results and you'll click, click on the search result and it will go to the website so this is what is called an organic traffic where nobody you haven't paid anybody even the restaurant hasn't paid anyone directly in the organic listings on google you might have clicked on it and you might have went in and uh, bought something from that store that is called organic traffic then there are various other things where in facebook or in various social channels you might have frequently saw an ad uh, uh, from a restaurant where you know you're seeing that they're getting a lot of engagements so you might feel that okay maybe when time comes i'll go to this restaurant and uh, the other way is that you might have also seen a popular blog covering about various dishes available for takeaway in this restaurant that also might given you a thought that okay whenever you know um, yeah, there is a chance i'll go and buy from this restaurant we call this as a referral traffic where somebody has referred something about a product and you as a customer wants to go and buy from that because somebody has given a thumbs up that this restaurant is is really good <clears throat> right and uh, the other way also what happens is in the same google you might have seen some ads say for example if i'm search for buy pizza near me so this is what uh, so if you notice here this is a direct listing this is an organic listing where of course i'm in a place where there is no ads being run uh, am, however if you are looking at best pizza you know, in Bangalore. Right. So, um, you know, you can see that there's a lot of people, a lot of these, um, you know, reviews of people. So the moment you see this kind of a listing, you'll be tempted to go to Brick Oven in this case, they have some good reviews, you know, you can check them out and you can always, uh, you know, uh, save this in your listing and you can go and pay a visit to them. So uh, typically this is how a journey of a user happens. So for this particular event where I have clicked on this result, and if I go and visit this website, nobody is going to pay to Google. This is a free listing. So, uh, you know, you can, uh, this is called as an organic traffic to the website, right? So the same case, there will be various things where you might have seen a review on YouTube again, the same person talking about, you know, reviewing that restaurant. So what happens typically is sometimes these restaurants collaborate with certain YouTubers and then when they refer traffic to that restaurant, through a specific link. When you purchase something from that link, the restaurant pays uh, uh, a kickback to the uh, YouTuber, maybe a 1% or 2% commissions, or maybe you know on a referral basis, they pay them up. This is called as affiliate traffic, where somebody gets commission from someone whenever they are referring that product to us, right? So uh, this is one way of getting a traffic. And of course, the other way is through social where you might have seen your friends Insta Reel and you want to go and visit the restaurant through, um, you know, so you got tempted by looking at those pictures. So this is how typically an online store can get traffic. They can get traffic from Google, from organic, from paid, from social, from referrals, from affiliates. So what not? There are quite a lot of these sources they can get traffic, yeah. So now coming from an organic traffic perspective, that's what uh, you know we're gonna cover in this uh, session. So we call it as search engine optimization. Why? Because most of these traffic is going to come from the uh, search engines. So what is search engine optimization? It is nothing but a combination of activities that you do to ensure Google believes that you're best at something. Right? You have to convince Google that you are the best when it comes to certain things. Say, for example, when you are creating a handicraft, you know, a hand, uh, a handcraft uh, notebook or whatever, right? So, whatever you create, Google has to trust that yours is the best product out there, right? And there are certain tactics which you have to deploy to ensure Google believes that okay, this is the person, the go-to person whom I have to show to my audience. 
So um, SEO levels the playing field. So in fact, like I explained to you before, when it comes to the, say for example, the YouTubers, right? When you go and pay them to do something about it, you have to pay them upfront, even before whether you see result or not, you have to pay upfront. Same thing when it comes to advertising channels, you have to pay and then get your ad put together. However, when it comes to organic, it's a level playing field. So even big brands, you might see TripAdvisor, you know, you have seen TripAdvisor ranking for that keyword related to pizza. And also you are going to see some blogger who's uh, some mom and pop shop who's there, who's new in the business. They can also have a chance to rank. So that's why, you know, if you do the right things properly, you'll be able to compete with the big brands, even with a very, very limited budget. Yeah. So um, you need to first understand how Google works. So most, if you, if you understand this, most of the work of SEO will be very, very easy, right? So the basic thing why Google even exists is that their main focus is to provide relevant and useful results in a fraction of a second to, to their users, right? So whenever you search something, Google wants to give the best result possible so that the users are satisfied. And they're happy that, okay, they've got the answer that they're looking for, right? So the important point to note here, this is a vision statement. This is directly taken from the Google's, uh, uh, you know, Google's, um, uh, you know, uh, vision statement. So they are showing here that they want to show relevant and useful results. Useful is the important point here because Google wants to show useful stuff to its users. Uh, so to get more organic traffic, you have to just focus on how useful the content that you can create and you can give it to the people yeah if google so, understands that your store has value and that your store is going to be of use to certain people then they will suggest google will suggest your store as uh, at the top essentially exactly yeah all right so when you search something on google it looks at many factors so the first thing they look into is the words of a query. They'll also look into what is the relevance of the content and they look into how good quality is that content and also how usable is that website. They don't want to show a website which is bad and which loads very, very slow. Those are all poor user experience. They want to show a good website. And also most importantly, they look into the location of the user and what settings they have in their Google, um, the, in their google.com settings. Based on that, they will modify the results accordingly. So every day, 15% of searches that happens on Google, Google hasn't seen it before. So what happens is since they don't know what this result is about, that's why they are using things like artificial intelligence to figure out what is the intent of the query, what is the user wants. So based on that only, Google is showing the search results, yeah? So here is an example where if you are searching for how to change a light bulb, here the context of change is to replace a light bulb, right? In the same way, if you put a keyword like does post office change foreign currency, there the word change has a different meaning. It is for exchanging a currency. The same thing, if you're going to look for how to change brightness on a laptop, here that same word change, but it is a different context. It is for adjusting the brightness on your laptop. So what Google tries to do is whenever you type something, it tries to understand what is that you're, you're expecting? You know, what is that you're trying to do? Are you trying to replace something? Are you trying to exchange a foreign currency? Are you trying to adjust your screen brightness? So, so they're just trying to make meaning out of the keywords that you're searching. Based on that, they want to show the results. So if you search anything in Hindi, mostly you might have seen the results will also be shown in that same language. The same thing, again, coming back to the example of pizza, if you search for that, you get results about that nearby business. I just showed you the example. In sitting in Chennai, when I'm searching for some pizza in Bangalore, I've been shown with a lot of those local businesses, right? You didn't see a Domino's pizza there, right? You saw someone local in Bangalore. That is the power of search engines, right? So if you search for any trending keywords, right? Say for example, IPL or cricket scores, right? So Google knows that he doesn't want to show a website which talks about you know, cricket scores of uh, 1983 World Cup, right? They want to show maybe right now in the situation, if somebody is searching for cricket score in India, Google will know that it is IPL is the most happening event and they will show mostly the IPL, uh, you know, scorecard in the search results. So that's how Google tries to look at your query. Everything starts from this only. If you understand this concept, everything else will become easier for SEO. So this is the starting point. You need to, Google first understands what is the query that you're searching on Google. Based on that, they are trying to show 
the results accordingly yeah so how can online store owners use this you're talking from the point of view of somebody who is looking for something how does an online store owner use this to their advantage yeah so um so so that perspective is what i'm going to explain to you guys in detail i think the starting point will be like first understanding your audience and then uh, deciding you know what should we how we should uh, you know uh, explain your product accordingly right it depends on what product you are selling and then looking at what people are searching on google and then trying to bridge that gap but providing by providing some useful information about the product that you are having if you do that then effectively your website can rank in a very uh, higher way and you can get good traffic okay yeah so so this is the first point the words of your query which i have explained the second point is relevance of the content now if you search for silk sarees so now that i am moving away from the pizza examples so let's move to the real deal that happens so when you search for silk sarees if the keyword appears on the page or if you appear in the headings or whatever on the website right so the word silk sarees is something which uh, mintra has used effectively right and google algorithm will assess that okay this page talks a lot about silk sarees so we'll give more priority to mintra in that case again just by having a page of you know you create a page with silk saree and put thousands of words about silk sarees you're not going to rank there are various other things that google also look into but the basic thing is that whenever somebody searches for it google will first check whether that page heading you know this is the result where the page heading here it says buy pure silk saree online in india so google has predicted that if somebody is searching for silk sarees they have assumed that that person is in the market to buy a uh, pure silk saree that's why they are showing mintra's uh, result over there so google wants to show a relevant result over here they don't want to show a silk sweet uh, or a, or a, or a something else with uh, you know related to that material they want to know they know that the user wants to see the sarees so they are showing the result related to the silk sarees the next thing is the quality of the content as well so if you look at mintra's uh, page which is regarding that silk sarees so that content actually it demonstrates a bit of a authoritative and trustworthiness imagine mintra everybody knows so the moment you see a website like mintra there is a high chance that you'll click on it and uh, you will trust them more because mintra has done a lot of brand campaigns the word mintra itself is searched uh, you know a lot of times maybe 500000 or maybe even a million times more so google knows that okay this brand is searched a lot by people so that brand value is being added and that's where there is a high chance that mintra will be able to dominate you know keywords like silk sarees so one of the several factors that google uses to help determine that is a prominent website link or refer the content this is often proven to be good sign uh, for google that it's a trustable source right that they have given a good um, content and also this particular page about mintra there are 70 other websites which are actually linked to this website they they say that hey if you are looking at silk saree go and buy in this website so like that there are more than 70 websites which have spoken about mintra so this actually adds up as a vote of confidence to google that okay this page on mintra we can rank higher because a lot of people are referring this brand and a lot of people are uh, referring to this particular page that talks about silk sarees so that's how the quality of the content and the quality of people talking about your brand also is a very uh, Uh, important piece followed by the usability again so this page in mintra if you browse on mobile phone it will be it will be a smooth experience uh, it will be having a good experience of course they are investing huge amount of money on the user experience so there are lot of you know things that you can tick you know when it comes to this result and also most importantly the location and results so i'm not sure if you can easily see this result but what i'm trying to show here is that you know if you are searching for cricket score in uk you'll be the first result will be the bbc.co.uk uh, and then espn.co.uk uh, mostly the uk sites will be shown if you are searching from the uk however in india when you search for cricket score usually crickbus uh, espn cricket info these are the sites um, you know that show up in the results so depending on the location of a user also google will show a different result based on their location and based on their uh, settings so put together that's how google works so here is also an example a live example which i can show you now that you know if i am in google if i am a uh, you know when it comes to the technology world there is a lot of automation testing tools 
that people use. So in this session itself, if I am mostly searching for automation tools, right? And then in the same session, if I'm searching for something like AI based or whatever, right? AI based. So Google is predicting that, okay, just because previously I was looking at automation testing, Google is trying to tell me that, hey, this is what you're trying to search. Because so Google they, is kind of understanding what you want even before you've written the entire thing. Exactly. So that's what Google is heading up to. So even, the, I, mean, I mean, the next stage is that the moment you think about it, you go, Google itself will show, hey, is this something which you're going to search? So that level, they are going to, uh, you know, analyze a user. They have the entire data. They know what I'm doing. So in this session, clearly I've, sh I've shown to Google that, you know, Google understood that I was in the market. I'm more interested in automation tools. The moment I search AI based immediately showing automation tools. Now in the same session, if I am in the market, I'm an SEO guy, I use a lot of SEO tools. So I am frequently, if I am browsing about various SEO tools available, right online. And now if I'm looking into, you know, uh, the results now, if I'm going to search the same keyword, I'm going to use like, um, you know, AI based or whatever. So let's try that. So now I'm going to look at AI based already. Google has decided, right? I haven't even finished yeah. it. They have already decided that, okay, I'm no longer interested in automation. I'm more interested in SEO tools. So, so this is the angle which Google is going. So it's not about, okay, you know, I am selling silk sari. I'm going to just uh, focus on silk saris. It doesn't work that way. You have to understand what is the user, your end user is going to look at. Say, for example, the silk sari example, they might be looking at silk sari for a wedding. They might be searching for uh, maybe silk sari for, a, for, their, uh, for a wedding gift for someone, a husband giving a gift to his wife. So there are a lot of um, you know, angles that people will be searching online, right? So that is exactly what Google is trying to predict. So this kind of user history, user browser history Google is keeping, that's why it is able to show up these kind of suggestions that I might be interested in these things, yeah? So... I hope um, you know you guys are going. To, you are keeping up with my pace. If I'm going too fast, let me know. I can explain you these concepts once again. Okay, cool. So to summarize, guys, um, the way Google works, you know, it looks into a user's search query. It sees which content is relevant that it can show in its results. To show that content, which content is relevant. So what it checks is it checks the quality of the content. It sees whether the person who's talking about the content has that expertise, right? It checks whether that page is usable and it also checks the user's location and settings. Thereby it shows the results. So that's how typically Google works. Yeah. Now going to the next steps, the queries, right? We call it as keywords. So the importance of keywords, you know, I'll be able to, I'll be explaining you you know, how quickly, easily you can, uh, without any uh, non-technical way, you, I'll, I'm going to show you how we conduct, you know, how you can conduct keyword research, uh, you know, for free. You don't have to pay anyone for doing this. So let's take, for example, you are in the market for, um, you know, you're selling t-shirts itself, or maybe better yet, let's take somebody, some other example. Maybe you have created a new type of shoe, uh, a running shoe, right? Uh, which will be, maybe it is very flexible and maybe it helps with improved, uh, uh, you know, reflexes, you know, it'll be able to easily, you know, the moment you wear it and run, it'll be very easy. Of course, you, I'm not going to compete you with Nike, but, you know, just trying to set up a base here. So you have some new idea, you have created a new shoe and you want to sell it online, right? So uh, when it comes to shoe, you'll be thinking, okay, I have to rank for shoe, but this is something which is going to be difficult. Why? Because for shoe itself, there are close to 5 billion plus, even I think this is 5.8 billion results available on Google. So ranking for that is going to be very, very cumbersome. And if you notice, Mintra is ranking for that shoes because they are from India. Uh, I am searching from India. So, uh, you know, Google is giving prominence to them. So now going after this kind of keyword, it's going to be extremely difficult. But the moment you see here that uh, Google itself is trying to help me choose because just searching for shoe, it doesn't make sense. Maybe, you know, I am searching for a shoe for myself, or maybe I'm searching a shoe for my wife or for my daughter. It might be for anything. So, or maybe I'm searching for a shoe for a meeting that's coming up. Uh, I have to go for a formal meeting. So I have to search for, maybe I'm in the market buying a shoe uh, for that. So Google is trying to predict without, you know, so far I've been searching for what automation tool, SEO tools, right? In the same session. Now, suddenly when I'm searching for shoe, now Google is trying to help me 
by showing, okay, hey, hey, don't just search for a shoe. Give me yeah, some more context so that I can understand and give you what a better result. Yeah. So now, okay, I'm, I'm looking at, okay, I'm looking at show, shoes for men. Now, if you look at the results, now, you know, this has slightly gone down. It's no longer 5.8. Now, okay, it's 4.8 billion. Still, it's more, right? Now, if you notice, Agio is coming more because they have a page which exactly talks about low price offer on footwear for men, Flipkart is there and Mintras again, they are coming up as well, right? So now again, this also is a very tough query. So what we have to do is when we are starting out, don't go for these kind of now, if you look at the next step, right? Google is now again, trying to help me further. I understand that you're searching shoe for men, but are you searching for a casual wear or formal wear? Are you looking at, you know, shoe for, you know, maybe hundred. Let's assume that I'm looking for a shoe under maybe 2000, right? Or maybe thousand. Now, if you notice that the search results are just going down and down. Now, if you look at the exact query, right? The shoes for men under thousand. On the web, it's only 18 people who are actually exactly targeting this keyword. So one is Mintra, which has shoes, sports shoes for men under thousand rupees. Right. I'm not sure what this frames is about, but you know, frames on, I think they got messed up, you know, anyways. So Rahi, does this make any sense to you? Rupees, frames, Mintra, I'm not sure. Sport shoes for men under thousand rupees frames. I think Mintra has made a mess out of this title. Anyways, see if you notice, right? Shoes for men under thousand rupees, only 18 results are there in Google. Now, if you're searching for 2000, you know, that's only 12 results. In fact, there is not much results that is exactly targeting that. This this particular thing, buy Nike shoes for men under 2000. So there's only limited results that you can, that the pages which are exactly targeting this keyword, right? So this can be a good starting point. If you are starting out, rather than going after shoes for men, you can go after these kind of longer queries. Okay, see so if, you, if you notice here, even then Google is trying to help me further by looking at, hey, are you looking at the branded shoes under 2000? Are you looking at instead of shoes? Now they are slightly altering and trying to help me further by saying, Hey, are you looking at best sneakers under 2000? Because it looks like, you know, you are in the market to spend something about 2000 is your budget. So Google has already fixed it. If you notice here, most of these results are showing 2000 because they've already made up their mind that I am in the market. I have only 2000 rupees. So now they are trying to help me further. Now, when I look at best sneakers under 2000 in India, so now, you know, it, this just keeps going on and on. Now, if you notice, Mintra is no longer here. Somebody like best performance, best in is something which is coming. Now, suddenly the new players are also getting it. Gizmofast.com. See, all these are new. GG, what is that? GQIndia.com. So, you know, of course, Mintra is there. But if you notice, the more lengthier or the more longer that, you know, the query is, the brands don't really show up much. Much there is a high chance that even the startups can start uh, ranking over these queries. Now this is exactly how you know when you are starting out, um, you, know, you focus on these kind of uh, uh, you know long form uh, you know keywords. Yeah. Can you guys tell me how the flag in this thing? Just tell me I can, I can. I think my internet was a bit, uh, it was, um, okay, I think, yeah, I think it's good now. Okay, Central, you can continue. It's fine now. Okay, sure. So let me get back to this presentation. Yeah. So now that you guys, you know, understand like how you can select the keywords. So don't go exactly on, you know, just shoes or whatever the, the basic product, but try to search on Google and understand 
what other people are searching for, right? If you master this itself should be more than sufficient for you to understand what type of, uh, you know, keywords, what type of queries should you target for your store, right? Um, if you, if you're able to, you know, this can be a good starting point because there are n number of things further. You can go in detail in terms of doing this keyword research, but on a basic level, this itself should be a good starting point because you know that you're targeting, you know, your product better and uh, you can target those kind of keywords where people are in the market searching for it and you can optimize or build content around those kind of uh, keywords. Okay. So I'm moving on to the next slide so i'm just putting this back on slideshow so uh, if you guys have any questions on the keywords um you know let me know put it on the chat box and uh, of course don't worry there's going to be a very very detailed um, you know keyword strategy that we are going to uh, the webinar series that we're going to do um so this as a starting point should be enough if you are a beginner just look at google suggest and see what type of queries people are searching about the product that you're in and try to build content around that product right and uh, the next thing is to rank, Google has to trust you, but when you're just starting out, so you have to build the trust, right? Because that's the whole point. So uh, of course you cannot just like that build uh, another Mintra, but what you can do is there are certain tactics which you can deploy so that Google can um, believe that, okay, you are a subject matter expert and uh, it can rank your website higher. So the basic elements of, um, you know, of an e-commerce SEO, the, the, I think the major part is that after you've do, done the keyword research, I think the major part is for you to first build a small community. Um, Sensei, trust your expertise. Hello. Before, uh, before we actually talk about how to build trust, I mm -hmm. think your video, uh, video is frozen. Could you um, switch off your video and switch it on again? Yeah. Okay. What about now? Now is it okay? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry about the glitch. Um, yeah. So is it fine now, Rahi? Can we proceed ahead? So you yes, you have yes. any further questions on this thing? Can we proceed with branding? We can, we can. So how do we actually build trust and how do we make Google trust us? Yeah. So, so uh, you know, before we make Google trust us, let's, you know, we have to say, for example, if I am building something first my wife has to believe my parents has to believe me my friends has to believe my product right it all starts with you know first checking with uh, your own you know uh, people who are close to you and then trying to build a small community of people who trust your expertise say for example if you are uh, if you are a pet lover and uh, you know it'll be easier for you to build a community of like-minded people who are say for example you are mostly looking at native breeds of dogs right and uh, you can easily build a community if you keep posting about the same um, there will be a lot of people who will engage with your post and slowly you can start building a community so whoever is coming you know, uh, into this world, into this world of SEO, and wants to build traffic to the website. The first thing I'll advise them is, you know, before we even start building content for Google, first build a community. There is a re there is a reason why the advice has been given like that. It's because the moment you build a community, right, you'll be able to understand what type of conversations people are having about that certain thing. Say, for example, for native, if you are into the pet industry, you know, if you're passionate about raising uh, native breeds, there are n number of things, n number of things when you speak to the community, you'll be able to understand what type of food that the dogs have to take, what type of vaccines, uh, you know, what type of uh, accessories, you know, there are lots and lots of uh, pet accessories available these days to make your pets comfortable. So there are n number of things. So those kind of real life, com uh, you know, uh, communication with the, uh, you know, with the like-minded people, it's the base, you know, no matter how much keyword research that you do and all the other things, speaking to the people will give you the actual keywords in terms of, okay, these are the problems people are facing, or uh, these are the things which is trending in the market that I can actually build a business upon, right? So it's always important to build a community that trusts your expertise. And once you build this brand, the next important thing is whenever you share something, say, for example, you have built a community of 100 people, right? 100 of your friends are following your posts on Facebook or Instagram. And um, they know that you have started a new business. Say, for example, you have 
created a new type of leash for a dog, right? Maybe it's made up of uh, recyclable material and it has a sensor which, you know, uh, which sends a message back to the owner saying that where their pet is, just making it up as an example. So you're having a website that is selling that uh, leash for the dogs. Um, so you can actually, you know, the more that you share that product on the on your channels, Mostly out of these 100 people, maybe 10 people or 15 people might be clicking on that link, they'll be visiting your website, right? So the more your website gets such kind of traffic, because like I showed you already, Google has already tracked me in this session, right? Now, right now, as we speak, Google knows that I'm interested in automation tools, I'm interested in SEO tools, I'm interested in pizza, I'm interested in what the shoes that we searched for. Now I'm talking about dog leash or whatever, silk saris. Uh, I'm not going to be surprised if Google is going to target a lot of silk sari ads, uh, maybe after this webinar. But you know, uh, but but if you look at it, the more traffic that a particular website is going to get from a certain type of people, it's it makes a better chance that Google will believe that okay, this website is getting a lot of traffic related to people who are in the market for buying something for their pets, in this case, maybe for a dog, right? So if 15 people, 20 people, or even 50, 100, if more and more people are again and again browsing your website, then Google will be able to track and it, it gives a signal to Google that here is a website which this type of community trusts, right? So naturally, your website will be kept in a higher regard when somebody in Google who is not part of your community, when they are also searching for something, Google will maybe give an equal chance for you that, okay, since this person is in the market, maybe a lot of people trust this brand maybe we should also give a chance so that's how you know you have to first focus on building the community right and uh, the the another important point is this is what i was referring to compared to even keyword research the sensory research is the key how what makes people really like a product it's not like if you look at a phone you know it's not like i'm just buying a phone i'm just buying an experience right that's how people that's how apple sells a lot of products right they are giving that premium experience so the moment you think about say for example an iphone right you get the feel like you're having some premium thing you know the touch and feel the way that you unbox the product itself right so they are directly uh, you know affecting your senses in a positive way so like that kind of a feel you'll get not by searching on google you'll be able to find only when you're interacting communicating with the people on the same mindset so that you can understand what do people like about it so that accordingly you can build content for your products you can build content for your website you can even build your own website based on that because the more you interact with your people the casual lingo will be unleashed because that's how people would want to relate to certain things, right? So those kind of casual lingo, once you understand, then it gives you a genuine indication of why that product will work or why it won't work, right? Use this kind of feedback, thereby you can curate the descriptions, you can create your about us section, even uh, when it comes to pet lovers, they, love, they like to buy from people whom they trust, right? So ensure that whatever that they are, the language which they are using, ensure your website is actually trying to speak in that same language. Why? Because your website is your sales guy. That salesperson is going to work day and night for you. So ensure that your sales guy speaks to your customer in a way that how you want to speak to your customer, right? You don't want to speak in French to someone who don't even understand French. So you need to be very clear about what, so all these uh, things you'll be able to understand only when you build this community. So it, this community meaning not like 1000, 2000 people, even 50 people, even 20 people, if you are able to have a small community, that's more than sufficient. So that okay. kind of thing is what you should start with. Yes, right. And I think that's interesting you brought this up because uh, having, as you said, right, your e-commerce website is your salesperson. So if somebody sees the website first, they make the decisions based on what is there on the website. And on Instamojo, we actually offer these services, these content services, where as you said, right, we understand what community is going to be most attracted to your product. So we offer services where we will create and curate product descriptions for you. We'll curate the about page for you. We'll write down the content in a way where, as you said, your community, which is relevant, is attracted to your products. Absolutely. So I think, you know, if you are starting out, if you're, because see, writing a description, you know, it sometimes you will be too artistic. Sometimes, you know, you'll be just sitting and thinking, what should I write about it? So in case if you are stuck about these things, you can use 
you know uh, services like insta mojo or maybe there are quite a lot of people you know just use these kind of things so that that uh, you can focus on you know what your community wants you just tell what exactly it needs to be communicated and let the specialists take over that and you can focus on further engaging your community and exactly. uh, building your audience yeah so here is an example say right this is an example of somebody again this person he, he's not a big famous he's not elon musk he's not that kind of bigger this this is like a small guy who has a small following right it's like of course 1600 people following this person he keeps on posting about sunglasses right in his instagram and then when that same person goes and blogs about best sunglasses for men in 2022 right so that kind of blogs are ranked well on google so this particular blog ranks for best sunglass guide so a lot of people searching for the best sunglasses right so he has picked this niche he you know if you look at his instagram profile he would have put up tons of posts related to uh, the various uh, sunglasses so he's quite passionate about it so uh, when he builds a post and he and people know that this is posted by even um, and and when they uh, and when a lot of people are browsing this content so naturally he's going to get more attraction and google also believes that okay this person this post gets a lot of traffic from people because now google knows that uh, there are these people who are in the market uh, you know looking for sunglasses so this post naturally gets more traction on google as well so that's why it's quite important that you build for the community first and then look at even you know promoting your website or the other things yeah that's so now being active on building a social media profile building a social media presence right yep absolutely and that's exactly what i'm going to help explain you in the coming slides so how to build your brand online that's the question which you might be having i think the basic thing which you can do you don't have to break your head too much you know whatever you're doing right now you know on facebook or instagram or maybe on youtube if you can shoot a quick video about your product or about it just keep continuing with the creation creation of the content right around the topic don't directly try to sell uh, you know the product create a content around the product in terms of you know what is the problem you are trying to solve with the product why this product is needed first of all right what is a problem say for example uh, the same pet example which i told you say for example you have created a product which is a pet leash so uh, that product you know it can trigger you know within a 50 meters if the pet goes around that radius it alerts you okay let's assume that is the case now how many times you know even i myself when i uh, have a pet it used to you know run away and we have to you know go and catch them we don't know sometimes they might easily escape and it it creates a big commotion around the communities right so um maybe if i explain that and tell them like if there is something which can help an owner get an alert that if a pet has gone beyond a fisting or even more beyond that maybe this has a monitoring system and it alerts me that my pet is having a fever right i might not know that but that sensor can actually send me a message about it right hey you know the pet is maybe warm maybe because there are some breeds which uh, you know say for example i am in chennai right now it's 44 45 degrees so some some dogs will not be able to tolerate this kind of heat right so um, so that kind of a you know content that you when you consistently put out right um when somebody else is having say for example if i am putting this content saying that hey in chennai it's 45 degrees dog breeds like cocker spaniel or others they're all foreign breeds right they cannot survive <clears throat> in that kind of uh, heat they might need a room which is cool and all the other things if i'm going to share that maybe 10 or 20 more people who also own that cocker spaniel or who own that similar dog breed they might be um they know that i own the dog so they would like to engage with me that's your judgment and your opinion yes Because they like to, to ask going through it exactly so they'll be commenting on my post and then i'll be you know interacting with them slowly a small community is getting formed there and then engage them engage with more conversation with other people so there are tools like sparktoro you know you guys can check that out google yourself sparktoro and you can check the tool so what this tool does is if you put something like pet food or any other search terminology over there um this tool will tell you which are the popular brands which are the popular youtube channels which are covering this data which are the popular podcast that um, people are sharing more information about these topics so what happens is you can subscribe to those uh, channels and keep a tab of what content that they are creating so this will help you also understand what type of content which you also can prepare right not blindly copying from them but at least you'll get an idea like what type of content people are liking more so you can even create a commentary from your perspective what you feel you know about that topic so like that you can create it and post it on your uh, social profiles 
and then you can also guest blog on other sites so here is an example of uh, you know so there are other websites say in the again going back to the uh, pet example right there there are a lot of blogs that talk about how to take care of your pets right so you can send them your posts screenshots or your uh, content that you created on youtube or other things you can tell them like you have an experience and you want to share it with their community most of the time those uh, website owners would like you to share content about say for example how to maintain your pet in high extreme temperatures right so you can create a detailed content about it you can take pictures of your pet and all the things these add more value and when you share it to this kind of websites what naturally happens is that website also has a small community they also start reading your post and they might start following your social channels right so that's how this actually also leads to a more even more branding and help you even more um, community building and also you can pitch for guest speaking opportunities in the other youtuber channels there are a lot of youtubers who invite guests in their uh, in their uh, interviews so you can be a speaker for various uh, pet related uh, youtube channels you can pitch them your idea and you can get interviewed so those are the areas where you can get some easy publicity for your brand and also people the more they know about you they will check out your profile they'll know that you have a uh, product which helps them so they might be willing to buy people because they trust you because you have already shared information about uh, those things right so that's how the thing happens and the last but not the least there yes rahi so you have any questions in case if somebody we actually has do have a lot of questions and since we are are quite short on time uh we will be sharing this ppt with our viewers but i think it's better if we open the q and a session now and just start answering a few of them okay okay uh so for example there is one question by mudita hello what are some basic seo practices that i can take care of on my store so if you could quickly quickly run us through maybe four or five things that we could do on our store mm -hmm. uh to help optimize for seo for google okay sure so um so so once you have this community in place the next immediate obvious thing is to optimize your website so that now you can um you know now that you have made successfully made google trust your brand the next immediate thing is to optimize your uh, website right so for that uh, some of the uh, basic things that you have to keep in mind is that you need to ensure your e-commerce store has these four basic pages the category page where you list down all the products under specific categories the okay. actual product page and then the blog and the detail guides right there are a few examples which i can show you now now this is something which is regarding the category page you can feel free to check it out uh this is an example of a product page where you know um, i think this website is based on I, th i think this is based on insta mojo uh this thing where out of the box you get these things so no matter what um, you know you don't have to break your head in building these things most of the uh, store uh, providers they platforms they provide these things out of the box so here is a good example of how a product page can look like it has a good image of the product pricing of it quantity add to cart or buy now sharing you know this this is quite important this is what is important for building your brand having a share option on social messages because people might have some question about this product so there is a message uh, option available so these are some good things which is available again these are available out of the box right on the product page and then creating blog posts again these are mostly available on all the platforms and then creating detailed guides about various things now if you have these kind of four content types then the immediate thing which you can do is to technically optimize the site say for example in the example here i showed you that the titles and the descriptions these we call it as title and this is what we call as a description now if you are assuming that if you are an insta mojo user right there will be various settings available the basic seo and all these settings now you know uh, even if you use any other store there will always be options for tweaking your basic seo now when you click on basic seo there will be option available to add title description now whatever you add here right as the title and description that is what is going to show up in the search results like this this is the title and this is the description so you need to ensure that this title and description you add your best keywords whatever that you found over here so that there is a high chance that your store um gets discovered by the google because this is the first thing that google checks what is the title of the page yeah so you have to optimize your title your description uh, as you said use keywords in them and then also uh, optimize your product descriptions and your category pages right 
that's right exactly so you can apply the same this title description this is the only technical thing you know i'm i've just you know starting to speak the technical jargons the titles descriptions but you know this title description can be added to any page that i showed you right all these four content types on your website the category page the product page all these pages you can edit the title description so that uh, the google bot will be able to understand okay what this page is about all right uh, another question that we have had is that mm -hmm. um, what should most of my starting budget go towards so if you have just opened a store uh, what and since you can create free online stores in instamojo mm -hmm. now that i have some budget what should i use that budget for okay see i i would i would usually split that budget into two one is i'll spend 40 to 50 percent of it on building that community like i said maybe giving free giveaways or maybe giving few discount codes trying to promote your uh, uh, you know products that is one angle the other thing which i'll mostly invest is on the content so that is what gets you the bulk of the investment so uh, you need to get a good product description a, a good um, content written on the website sometimes you know uh, we all not everybody is uh, uh, passionate about writing some kickass content there are people you know who are creative enough who are passionate in writing itself so you need to you know give that kind of a thing to those people so they can get the good because no matter how much traffic comes to the website you need to explain your product well right your sales guy your salesman has to explain your pro explain what your product is about right so in while you are doing all the hard work of building community and all the other things but the moment somebody steps into your online store ensure you give them a good experience and ensure the copy of the description is really good that's what people are going to read and they are going to decide whether they're going to buy from you or not we actually have a question could i can you give me a good example of an seo friendly product description yeah of course i can so say for example even if you can take this um, example itself um i'll just go to this website yeah yeah so you can you, you can maybe... have the categories on top right you have anklets bracelets it's all there so if somebody really just wants bracelets they can directly go there correct so so here is a, a brief say for example here in the title itself the seller has clearly given what is this about it's a pendant it's having 8 mm see these are the things people search for they know that they know what is a mangal sutra they know what is a mangal sutra chain but they know they want to know what's the size you know because buying online you should be very careful on what is the size wow. because it's a business so this um this website owner he he or she has understood that okay this is what my target audience need to know and they have already given coming to description you just look at it so they have just given everything in a clear way they they are just trying to help this people saying that you know just keep it away from water and moisture see it's like yeah you buy from me i don't care you know it's not like that they are helping you here saying that hey after you buy you ensure that you keep this away from water and moisture he, they are just directly caring about longevity you know longevity rather than you know trying to sell you and then forget about, only trying to say good things about the product this product is this that instead of that this person is directly That's helping useful yeah to be stored in airtight packaging made according to fixed length so this is more than sufficient you know you don't have to build thousand words content on it of course you can you can build a lot of story around this but in this example i like this example because this person has actually compared to trying to sell they are trying to help and this is what people will like about uh, they this will automatically build trust on this website yeah i think this was very helpful for somebody who has just started out um to summarize what you have said for them to first build a community where that community knows what you're selling is going to be useful for me is going to be relevant for me then you said use long tail read keywords right and yep. if you could just give maybe a small uh, summary of where where they can put the keywords in the e-commerce website so that google can help you know google can catch those keywords faster that is going to help them rank better yeah so that's where the titles the descriptions you know so those are the areas where google will first look into it that is one and if you are in the you know if you are trying to do more research right i'll also show you a few tools so i'll i'm going to split the uh, you know skip these things what we'll do is in the next webinar series we'll go in depth about these technical stuff for now 
you know, I think this should be a good starting point for you. I'll also share you a few tools which you can use. Say, for example, Google Auto Suggest, which I was trying to explain. You see, here is an example, T-shirt Kia. Immediately, Google is trying to, it understood that you are trying to search in English. So they are now trying to show results. And so these, so this is a number one tool I would suggest you guys use. It's free. And then you can also check popular searches on Google. You can usually find this in the bottom of the search results. Right. You can also use a tool like answer the public, where if you put any keyword inside, it will it will pull out all the questions people are asking. And most importantly, they give two to three, uh, you know, two to three free searches every month. So if you put something like silk saris, then or T-shirts, right, uh, this tool is going to pull out all the questions people are asking about, you know, T-shirts. So this is like a good starting point if you start answering all these questions through a blog or through your, this thing, you know, in your product descriptions, it will be super good. You'll be able to easily rank. Another tool which I would suggest is to use Ubersuggest because uh, this tool also gives you like two to three searches per day. So you also get to know how many people are searching for this keyword. What is the difficulty? You know, how much do I have to pay if I'm going to run an ad for getting traffic? So there are n number of uh, things that you can do. But suggest itself, it's like a it needs a separate uh, you know webinar to explain. There are n number of things which you can do, uh, even with the free version itself. So um, these few tools you can use, and um, of course you know these are the other tools given by Google itself, uh, like Google Search Console, which you have to any website owner. This will be a critical thing. Uh, to check what type of keywords that your website is ranking. So this tool will be able to help. And uh, of course, Google Analytics, this is the tool where you can check how many visitors are coming to your website, what products are they purchasing more. So all those data you'll be able to get from these tools. These are absolutely free. So you can install it on your website and you can get all these information um, you know, on the site. And also there are certain tools like SiteLiner. So what this tool helps is um, it'll try to help and help you in terms of determining, is there any duplicate content? Sometimes what happens is if you're having two products, one is t-shirts for men, another is t-shirt for men in black color, there might be a high chance you might use the same content on both those uh, you know, uh, pages. So this tool will help to uh, you know, figure out those kind of content and it'll try to show you that, hey, these are duplicate content because Google doesn't like duplicate content. So you have to ensure um, you know, those are uh, fixed on the site, right? Again, these are tech tools. You know, SEMrush is another tool. It's a paid tool. You can use uh, to check the search volume and all the other things. In, in fact, all these tools deserve a separate series of webinars because each and every tool have tons of features. SEMrush has hundreds of features. Um, you know, for now, I would suggest you, you know, just stick with these few. Google Auto suggests you know, answer the public, Google suggests these are more than sufficient for you to get started today itself. And, uh, you know, feel free to give me a shout out and um, available on, you know, phone or, you know, email, you can email me, send the link, Neil Patel, digital or then you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And uh, I'll be doing my best to help you guys out. No, absolutely. I think I can promise our viewers that Today, if we touched upon basics of a beginner who has just started and, you know, they want to try the organic way of getting traffic, we will definitely have another webinar which discusses this in a bit of a more advanced level where we talk about the technical aspects of SEO and how you can make sure that, you know, you uh, rank higher on Google. Thank you so much, Senthil, uh, for telling us what are the key core things that every beginner should be doing when they start selling online. Um, and as you have already shown them, Instamojo does automatically optimize your online store. Not only that, it also gives our premium users the option to use meta titles, meta descriptions, so that so that we can Google can help recognize their store better. Um, as I, as I've already mentioned, we also have content services where if you need help writing product descriptions, or if you need help structuring your page, then please do reach out to us. Instamojo, our team is always there to help you. Uh, also, we also offer domains and hosting for seven at a seven MRP, which is 70% lesser than market prices. And if you want to be in charge of your own e-commerce journey, but want it hassle-free without the worry of coding and, you know, not knowing too many technical things. You can try it Instamojo. The if you want like an easy landing page builder, both the links to creating a free online store and smart pages is in the description. Also, we have a freebie for everybody who registered for this webinar. So if you have not registered yet, 
The link is in the description. Please put in your email ID and we'll make sure you get the email just after the webinar ends. Thank you so much, Senthil, for joining us. Thanks, Rahi. Thanks, team. Thanks, InstaMojo team for arranging this webinar. It was a pleasure speaking to you guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.